Washed up on the beach is this amazing, strange structure. It's not a ship, but it's not a plane. It's someplace in between. And if you ramble around inside, it's got seats for the pilot and the co-pilot and separate compartments for radar operators and probably weapons operators. A mile and a half from the beach Leviathan is another structure, its connection and purpose not immediately clear. It seems to be in the middle of nowhere, and how better to keep a secret than to have it far away from prying eyes. At first glance, it almost looks like a vintage airport terminal. It even has a tower, but it's out in the water with no obvious or easy way to reach it. And when we penetrate into the interior, it looks like a tumble-down factory or some kind of industrial installation. What links these two hulking beasts? And why did this strange machine strike fear into the hearts of Western governments? Even the CIA was a little freaked out by this Soviet invention. This decaying structure was once at the forefront of Soviet Cold War military research. Former pilot Ale Gadej Abdul Galimov spent many years at the controls of the extraordinary machine. I think I made about 70 or 80 flights on this one. I was never frightened. I was curious. I was fascinated to conduct all the tests and experiments. What results we would get. All of us did our best to succeed. But this is no normal aircraft. The revolutionary design was intended to give the Soviet military superiority over their American rivals. The key to it all is a scientific principle called ground effect. When a plane flies very close to the ground or, say, to a flat surface like the ocean, a cushion of air builds up between that surface and the wing, and that gives the plane a little bit of extra lift. Which means you can float very close to the ground and at very high speeds and never touch it. And that's going to make it much easier to go faster and further and more efficiently uh, than ever before. All the militaries of the world were looking at this, but it was the Soviets that really, you know, worked on it intensively from the 1950s on. Why? Because the U.S. Navy ruled the world, and none of the communist navies had the resources to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with American carriers. The clandestine project was the brainchild of distinguished Russian engineer Rostislav Alexeyev. Testing of the part plane, part ship prototype, called an Ekranoplan, began in 1966 on the Caspian Sea. The KM was the first Ekranoplan that was designed and built. It was like a flying laboratory, an embodiment of multiple ideas. Many experiments were performed on it and lots of data collected. What the Soviets didn't know was that American spy satellites were closely monitoring the secret tests. When the Americans got a look at this amazing craft zooming across the Caspian Sea, they were really pretty blown away. It absolutely terrified the Defense Department, the CIA, all of which could not believe this. The colossal craft soon earned an ominous nickname. The Western military forces called it the Caspian Sea Monster because they thought it was a beast, a monster they had never seen before. But it was beautiful. During the flight, it was really beautiful. But the Soviets wanted something that could go faster than the Caspian Sea Monster. 
and they replaced it with a craft they called the loon, which was this behemoth we see on the beach of the Caspian Sea. In 1987, the loon was first put through its paces. At 240 feet long, it was almost as big as a jumbo jet and could travel at speeds of over 310 miles per hour. The LUN is the most potent of the Acronoplans. And of course, it was impossible for radar at the time to detect the LUN because, again, it's flying so close to the surface and you've got the use of advanced missiles. When NATO commanders got wind of this craft's development, they all knew exactly what it was designed for. To put it bluntly, the idea was to destroy aircraft carriers. That was it. To conduct lightning-fast seaborne attacks, the crew of the Ekranoplan needed somewhere to test its deadly weapons. Ali Gadish first came here back in the early 80s. The workshop was in a relatively good condition. It had an oak parquet on the floor, and machinery was intact. A roof was still in place, and the building still had windows. It was called the Dag Diesel plant. When operational, it also had a military purpose. In the 1930s, the Soviets needed a place to test torpedoes, uh, and the Caspian Sea was the perfect place to do this. But this test facility had actually been abandoned by the time the Akronoplan was being tested. So it becomes a target for the Akronoplans to practice their missile skills against potential adversaries. The Loon was declared a huge success and the Soviet military had big plans for their devastating new weapon of war. In the West, the USSR's Cold War enemies lived in fear. It was an aircraft carrier killer. That's what they saw it as, and they were right. This was a real threat. Off the coast of Dagestan, is a revolutionary war machine. Part boat, part plane, it had Western powers running scared during the Cold War. This thing was absolutely enormous, and a single missile or two could take out a modern aircraft carrier. It was a formidable weapon. But the Ekrano plan would never be called into action. The winds of change were beginning to blow, and soon the Iron Curtain would come crashing down. By the 1980s, the Soviet Union was on its last legs. It was spending every dime it had trying to keep up with the US in an arms race. Its economy was falling farther and farther behind. When the Soviet Union fell in 1989-90, Gorbachev basically cut funding for the Akrano plans, and the few that had been assembled were just sort of left behind as white elephants, one of them here in the Caspian Sea. So it's sort of heartbreaking in a way that this experimental, ambitious, beautiful, strangely beautiful craft was just left to kind of rot and fall apart. The abandoned Cold War relic is soon set to have a new home at a military theme park. Until construction of the site is finished, the craft remains stranded in its coastal grave. The Ministry of Defense decided that the Lun shouldn't be destroyed, but kept for future generations to see what talented designers and workers Soviet Union had at the time. <laughs>